purpose of this video is to explain some of the properties of the Laplace transform. Uh, these properties are very useful when you're analyzing systems, in particular when you're analyzing systems described by uh, constant coefficient linear differential equations. Uh, these properties give you uh, a way of going straight from a differential equation to the corresponding transfer function. So we'll go through these pretty quickly. I'm not going to um, derive any of them. Uh, most of them are fairly straightforward to derive. Um, but So here we go. So the first property of the Laplace transform that we're going to talk about is linearity. And what that means is that the Laplace transform is a linear transform. So if I have some time signal x of t and its Laplace transform, which I'll denote by an arrow like this, is x of s, and I have another signal y of t and its Laplace transform, is y of s, then um, I can take a linear combination of x and y. So I can write ax plus by. And if I take the Laplace transform of these two, that will be ax of s plus b y of s. So what this is basically telling us is that the Laplace transform of the sum of two signals is the sum of the Laplace transforms. And that turns out to be pretty handy in a lot of different applications. Uh, now this is true for both the unilateral and the bilateral Laplace transform. And in fact, uh, I'll only mention, uh, hopefully, uh, those ones that are not uh, true for both uh, when they're not true for both. So another property which gets used sometimes is that of a delay or a time shift. So again, if x of t transforms to x of s, then x of t minus t0 transforms to e to the minus s t0 x of s. Okay, So this is a useful result um, if you're trying to uh, get signals that have delays in them figured out or if your system has a delay in it. And usually what ends up happening, well, if you're lucky, is uh, if you find that you have either a transfer function or um, uh, a signal that you can factor an e to the minus s t0 out for some value of t0, then it means that there's a delay. And uh, if you can't factor out a single e to the minus s t0, then it turns out your life is going to be quite miserable because it's uh, fairly hard then to do forward and inverse transforms with, uh, with uh, those sorts of things. So the next one that we'll talk about is the idea of a time derivative. And this, if I had a uh, musical fanfare, I would play it right here. Of course, actually, I should just concentrate on spelling derivative. Uh, the idea behind the time derivative is this. If I have a signal, again, x of t, that transforms to x of s, and I take the derivative of that signal with respect to time, Sometimes you'll see this denoted as x dot. This transforms you know, with the bilateral Laplace transform to s x of s. So with the bilateral Laplace transform, taking the derivative of a signal in the time domain is the same as multiplying it by s in the frequency domain. And this is how um, the Laplace transform tra uh, converts uh, differential equations into essentially equations with polynomials because we're going to get these powers of s and we'll group everything together and you'll find that we end up quite often with transfer functions that are ratio of polynomials. 
So this is what happens if I use the bilateral Laplace transform. If I use the unilateral Laplace transform, which again is the one-sided Laplace transform, you start the integral from 0 minus as opposed to minus infinity, this transforms to s x of s plus, this is the thing that's different, oops, and that's the thing that of course I would get wrong. Let's try that one more time. s x of s minus x of 0 minus. So the thing that happens here that's different is um, I still have the s x of s, but now I've got a term that involves the initial conditions. So if the initial condition, in this case, uh, the initial state value x is not 0, then I get something different with the unilateral Laplace transform than I do with the bilateral Laplace transform. And it turns out, <coughs> here we'll clean off a lot of this. It turns out that if I take a second derivative, so I have d squared x of t d t squared, this transforms with the bilateral Laplace transform into s squared x of s. So if I have a second order derivative here, I end up with an s squared term here. With the unilateral Laplace transform, I get more initial conditions. So d squared x of t over dt squared transforms with the unilateral transform into s squared x of s minus s x of 0 minus minus x dot of 0 minus. Okay, so this is the first derivative of x evaluated at the time 0 minus, this guy here. So you can see that as I keep adding derivatives, so I'll go from 2 to, or 1 to 2 up here, that I keep adding more initial conditions down here. And that's uh, pretty much uh, the big difference between the bilateral and unilateral uh, Laplace transforms. Uh, the bilateral or the unilateral transform is useful when we have initial conditions that we need to look at. Okay, well, let's clean this all up then. And uh, let's pick a lovely color for the integral. So uh, if I have the time integral from minus infinity to t, of x of tau, where tau is a dummy variable of integration, Oops. and I take the unilateral Laplace transform of that, it just is 1 over s, x of s. So the derivative was s times x of s, uh, the integral is 1 over s times x of s, which somehow seems to me to be a, a satisfying thing. Uh, the bi or no, I'm sorry, big mistake there. This should be the bilateral transform. In fact, we'll uh, there. Yeah, that was a bad mistake. Okay, so the um, unilateral transform. I have the integral from zero minus to t x of tau d tau transforms to 1 over s x of s. Okay, so the issue here is that in order to get the unilateral transform, which is this guy, to look the same as the bilateral transform, I have to go from 0 minus to t because the unilateral transform starts at 0 minus. So one last uh, property and then we'll be done. I'll ignore the phone. It's my wife. I'll probably get in trouble. Um, so the last one is convolution.
okay, if I have x of t convolved with y of t for either the bilateral or the unilateral transform, this in the transform domain is x of s times y of s. So convolving stuff in the time domain corresponds to multiplication in the Laplace transform domain, which is really handy. Um, this is one of the reasons that we like Laplace transforms, is it turns convolution from something difficult to something not so hard. So this concludes the video on Laplace transform properties.